Welcome back, fight fans, to another video here on The Fight Game. The 1990s was an incredible decade for boxing. After the retirement of some 1980s legends such as Sugar Ray Leonard and Thomas Hearns, the sports graced the rise of new upcoming superstars. Two prominent figures were Pernell Whitaker and Julio Cesar Chavez who bootstrapped the decade and boxers such as De La Hoya and Trinidad continued the momentum, but there's one figure who seemed to defy the conventional means of fighting, Roy Jones Jr. Jones started his career at 154 pounds with a second round stoppage. Already in his first fight we see his footwork, as his opponent leans in with his head, Jones steps around to set up a new angle, quite like how Mike Tyson would angle himself around his opponent, a testament to the fast footwork of Roy Jones Jr. With a successful pro debut and a past Olympic pedigree to his name, Jones was a promising prospect before he even had his first fight. Jones portrayed a particular panache. He was flamboyant, he had great footwork and ring generalship. Jones' footwork was a form of dance. I think Roy Jones has his own style. Roy Jones is a young man with extraordinary talent, incredible hand speed, foot speed. He's a boxer first and foremost, but his power solidified himself as a knockout artist. I think his power is very deceptive and not really appreciated. He won his first 17 fights by knockout. Jones' hand speed was another key quality that allowed him to rise through the ranks in such a spectacular fashion. The epic combination of speed, power, and skill is a blend that allowed Jones to make his career one of the most noteworthy. Power and skill is great, but it's his supersonic speed that makes him one of the flashiest and exciting American boxers of the last few generations. Roy wasn't just fast with his hands, but quick with his mind. The devastating duo of speed and power made Roy Jones a force of nature in the ring. He's widely regarded by many fans to be one of the greatest boxers in the history of boxing, and that's no small claim. He's a boxer of breaking records and dazzling displays of his dancing prowess. Welcome to this video here on The Fight Game, where we take a look at Roy Jones Jr. in the first half of his highly acclaimed boxing career. Before being a title holder, Roy Jones took on Glenn Thomas. Thomas, who at the time had a record of 24 wins and zero losses. His defense is running. I can sit right there in the pocket and make you miss. That's the difference between a fighter. To me, uh, I feel I'm an all-around better fighter. Jones, on the other hand, had a record of 19 wins and zero losses. I mean, he could be a better fighter, but he can't beat me anyway. So, you know, there's people that are better fighters, people that are better boxers sometimes. And nobody's gonna beat me, I don't care what you are. Both fighters were undefeated with a commendable amount of fights, putting their records on the line before ever getting a title shot, which made the clash that much more exciting. The fight started with Jones landing a pretty clean left hook in the opening minutes. There's an old saying in boxing that says a good right hand can take you around the block, but a good jab can take you around the world. And that's never been as true as it was for Roy Jones Jr. He used his jab the way a jab should be used, not only to land, but to establish distance and rhythm. More often than not, the pace of a fight often goes the pace of the jabber. Jones' defense was less conventional, however, relying mainly on reflexes. It's a little problem. Thomas says he works off of other fighters' mistakes, and Jones, who likes to dazzle the crowd, doesn't make too many of them. As Jones' jab was well established going into the mid stages of the fight, he felt comfortable letting go of more power shots. So After this fight, some even compared Jones to Sugar Ray Leonard with regards to his exuberant fighting style. After breaking Thomas down with consistent movement, jabs, and power punches, Jones secured a technical knockout victory in the eighth round. If it was a mutual agreement, should Ray Jones Sr. be here to show his support? Jones had garnered quite a lot of attention in the boxing scene, even without being a world title holder. See, I'm paying attention to what's going on, and I see him good. He come right here. One more time, I got him where I, I got him where I can see him. Missed him there, missed him again. Boom! That was why I was trying to catch him with all the time. But there he is. Jones would go on to win two more fights before the sound of the final bell. 
Then after that, Roy Jones would challenge for his first world title in the middleweight division of 160 pounds against no other than Bernard Hopkins. The fight was for a vacant world title, and Hopkins was a crafty boxer who posed a big threat to Roy Jones. Some feel this fight was close, but others see it as a clear Roy Jones win. It was an impressive performance from Jones, but not just because of the skills he showed, but considering that Roy Jones' right hand was supposedly badly hurt in this fight. The fight was not filled with mass volumes of punches, it was rather technical and Jones did well to remain disciplined for all 12 rounds. Move so naturally. Get out of the way at the same time he's throwing. Jones beat Hopkins when he was in his prime, and it's crazy to think that these two undercard fighters would both go on to become future Hall of Famers. Jones showed sublime skills against a top-tier opponent and won a unanimous decision victory. The following fight saw Jones maneuver as if he was from the Matrix. His movement was so unusual it left fans and fighters bemused. At just 24 years old, Roy Jones had been widely acclaimed by many in the sport to be the pound for pound number one. Straight left hand was spectacular. Three, four, five. He established his own style of fighting which depicted seamless unorthodox movements. After a successful run in the middleweight division, Roy Jones would move up a weight division to fight James Tony at 168 pounds. If moving up a whole weight division wasn't enough of a problem for Jones, then the fight night weight surely was. Because from the way in the day before to fight night, James Tony had gained a monster 17 pounds to rehydrate to 184 pounds. With a weight disadvantage, Jones would have to remain elusive. And luckily for Jones, that was his forte. Jones ran rings around Tony with his footwork. His speed was too much for Tony to handle, and Tony struggled to let his shots go effectively. A true boxing masterclass. And then in round three, we saw this amazing sequence. The attempt fade, I think. Left hook, and down goes Tony. Jones was quick to the mark with his attacks, and Tony was simply overwhelmed with the quickness. Jones's tempo of fighting was indecipherable. Jones was better on so many levels. He was hurt a couple of times during the fight, Larry. Not seriously, but hurt. How about now? How about right now? And those who doubted Jones were eating their words. The narrative of the fight remained rather unchanged, and Jones cruised to an easy decision victory. This guy's a, a super middleweight Willie Pep. He makes moves that I haven't seen in a long, long time. Can make anybody look bad. Roy Jones, now being a two-weight world champion, continued to defend his belt with a number of knockout victories at the super middleweight division. Jones soon defended his belt against Vinny Paz. Jones started the fight with a quick, clean combination. That's Paz, he in a red shorts. It's a left-right combination. But then towards the end of the round, Vinny Paz would come back and bully Jones on the ropes. In the next round, Vinny showed Roy that he wasn't the only one that could move, and then continued to build the momentum. And by the end of round two, it looked like Vinny was going to take a lead. <laughs> then Jones landed a clean left, nearly dropping Vinny. Now it was Jones who took the reins and looked the better boxer. Jones's lead hand was incredible, picking Vinny off with lightning speed. As the rounds rolled by, Jones broke Vinny down. The quick start from Vinny quickly lost its relevance in the fight as Jones got going, landing his shots. All the years I'm watching boxing and calling boxing, this is the fastest jab I have ever seen. That includes Muhammad Ali. And Soon, Jones would drop Vinny Paz for the first time. Another left hook, a right. Paz, hands are hurt, holding on to the ropes. He's down. Vinny got up, but Jones put him down again quickly after. He's down again. <laughs> Vinny, like a true warrior, got up one final time. It's the goal, round number six. Jones says, come on, Vinny, let's call it a day. That's going to be a big party on it. A truly spectacular win for Roy Jones Jr. Both fighters showed what boxing was all about. Great character. Jones's time at super middleweight didn't end there. 
He continued to defend his belt and scored more knockout victories. Knockout after knockout, fans watched a Roy Jones fight expecting that at any moment, Jones would end the show. We haven't seen many boxers reign so definitively through the ranks like Jones did. He established himself as a very impressive super middleweight, and amazingly he carried his power effectively up in weight. So far we're only halfway through Roy Jones' incredible career. He would go on to win world titles in two more weight divisions to join an elite class by becoming a four-weight world champion. If you'd like us to make a part two to this video looking at the rest of Roy Jones' career, let us know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like as it helps us grow the channel. We'll see you in the next video here on The Fight Game.